I brought some things that some of you will remember and some of you won't. Um, I brought some reproductions of World War II rations. Jack Watson, you remember K rations? Oh, yeah. You got them? Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we had a lot of them. But there were two things in there. One was a cheese bar and one was a fruit bar. And you had to eat them both because you ate one, you were in trouble. <laughs> So you had to balance your diet. <laughs> I've never heard that. That's great. It, it turned out that K rations weren't that healthy for you, that there were just enough calories to keep you going in, in a normal day, but not when you're in combat. There's not enough food here for that. And also the nutrients weren't balanced right. And guys, especially in the Italian campaign, they found that people got sick and after eating too many K rations. So, but I bet in the Marines, you were living off these things. Oh, yeah. uh, when you were on Iwo Jima, what did you eat? K rations? K. That's all you, you ate? No, there were, uh, there were C rations also, which were, and then they came out with a new one at that time, which was 10 in one. A 10 in one, that's right, 10 in one. And that was enough food for 10 men. For 10 men, or one man for 10 days. They cooked a whole pile of rice, and we kept adding rice and water. We ended up with helmets full of rice, buckets full of rice, whatever. We threw rice away. We couldn't get enough of it. So they discontinued the K rations in 1948. Did you have a question, Joseph? Yeah. I want, I want to know how many guys here was in the service. Do you know what a P-38 is? Can opener. How many guys? Good. It's a can opener. You're right. <laughs> Do you mean that thing that I'm showing on the screen right now? Yeah, we used to put it around our necks so we didn't lose it on our dog tags. <laughs> That's where I'm going with this, Joseph. You're blowing my whole thing, my whole shtick. I was good looking for mine last night. I can't find it. <laughs> okay, well, let's get to the P-38. I was going to talk about C rations. Some of you, uh, if you served in Vietnam, you'd remember C rations. C rations were really the heartier food. Uh, and they were, C rations existed until the 19, early 1980s when they transitioned to... Uh, to MREs, but let's talk about this P-38, because if those of you who went to our breakfast last week in, um, at Robert Morris or the week before at uh, Penn Hills, you heard this shtick before, but I was so curious to talk about the P-38 because so many veterans have talked to me about that thing, and especially uh, Vietnam veterans have told me, they, do you have one, Rick? You keep one on your, on your uh, keychain there. This is a can opener. This was a can opener, and it was a can opener designed to open these things. Yes. <laughs> Why do you keep that on your... It comes in handy. For what? It's still today. I, it, I use it every once in a while. You know, it's, I've heard that over and over, and it turns out somebody gave me one. You have one too, Larry. That is fascinating to me how many people carry around you guys in the navy you didn't have you didn't worry about rations or you had a whole kitchen and galley right Natalie you got you didn't you weren't you don't need that stuff but if you're in the army or the marines or the air force uh you're most of some of the air force you're um you are using this p-38 and the p-38 was was designed it was commissioned in 1942 the army was looking for a, a lightweight inexpensive foldable can opener that they could put in with C rations that uh, guys could open a can quickly with it. And this it's a nifty little thing. Uh, does anybody else have any, remember the P-38 fondly? You, you do, you do, Bill? Sure. Yeah? Open a ham and beans. Oh, they were good. <laughs> Everybody remembers ham and beans, right? Lima beans, not, not baked beans. Everybody hates the lima beans, right? They were terrible. George Herwig, yeah. you remember, did you have, George, was it, you, would you mind standing up? I don't know how easy it is for you to stand up. How, how old are you, George? Uh, I'll be 97 in two months. Okay. So. Uh, I can still stand. You, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you were in the Coast Guard. Coast Guard. Did the Coast Guard have rations like that? We borrowed some things from different places. In fact, some big ships we weren't allowed on because we borrowed things. But, you but had the P-38, today they'd call it stealing, but now not then. Uh, we did use, uh, you know, the P-38 was good because in those days, a screwdriver fit every kind of screw. Today, uh, the, the screws are different, but in those days, the P-38 was terrific because you could use it for just everything and you had it right there with you all the time. So it, it was good for, for, I guess a lot of Navy guys had them, but we used them a lot. You used them. That's amazing yeah. to me. I still have one. My, in fact, my wife, we would, we're moving in the process of moving. If you ever have an opportunity to move, don't. <laughs> my wife had this stuff she was taking out of a drawer, and she said, George, what the hell is this thing? I said, it's a P-38. She said, what's a P-38? I said, use it for, for every old screws and things like that. She said, we don't have a screwdriver that would fit that anymore because the screwdrivers are all different now. But I still have one. She dug it out for me. And if I had known you were going to do this, I'd have, I'd have brought that P-38 with me. Is that P-38 from World War II? Yes. It really is? Yes, it is. Wow, yeah. that's so neat. That's so neat. Never thought it would get... Uh, and applaud like that. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> the humble can opener. But you know, you realize, thank you so much, George. <laughs> Bob, stand up, please. Uh, you had something to say about the P-38 or rations? Uh, rations. Um, one of the things on the sea rations, when, when we first landed at Incheon in Korea, we liked the ham and lima beans. Um, pork and beans, um, but there was things we didn't like, like hamburgers and gravy. Nobody liked them. We'd give those to all the rookies. <laughs> and as we're there longer, we just got tired of the hot dogs and beans and ham and lima beans, and we start doing things with the hamburgers. We'd take them out of the gravy and clean off the gravy and then fry them on our um, mess kits. And now we were eating good stuff. And corned beef hash, nobody wanted that at first. That was gone. But later on, we switched to the stuff we didn't like. And I mean, the stuff that you were eating was definitely made for World War II. Right. And the stuff a lot of <laughs> Vietnam vets ate was World War II vintage. Yeah, pretty old. I just wanted to say that sea rations held or contained 3,200 calories. So if you ate a whole sea ration meal, which we did, that was eaten up mostly uh, every day while we were patrolling. So 3,200 calories, uh, they were vastly improved over these K rations. My gosh, uh, about three times, I guess, as many calories. And we needed every one of them. So that's... I just wanted to put that statistic out. 3,800 calories for sea rations. Now, I mean, I hear a lot of complaints about the ham and lima beans. I loved them. You I, loved them. I, I, look, I let my men have first choice when, the, when they drop the boxes off the choppers. I took the leavings, and inevitably, I got ham and limas. I grew to like them. You, well, grew, I, you grew to like them. I grew to like every, every sea ration meal. I never got tired of any sea ration meal. I don't care what it was, I liked them all. I never got tired of army food. I liked all of it. Now, I, You're a little weird, Dennis. Go figure. <laughs> How? A good story about ham and lima beans. I was going through the Army ROTC advance camp at uh, Indian Town Gap. And we used to draw our rations. What they'd do is they'd open up the box upside down so that you wouldn't pick what you wanted. So we went through, picked them out. One of the guys in my platoon grabbed three boxes, all ham and lima beans. He looked at that. He walked right over to the trash can and threw them all away. So we had to share our rations with him so that he'd make it through the next day. Oh, gosh. Yes. Dan. Oh, Dan. 
America is not the only one that had a P-38. The Germans had a P-38, and it was a pistol. And I have one at home. That's true. The P-38 was not only an airplane, it was a German pistol. And you got a German pistol. I have a German pistol. It's a P-38. And the top officials and all big officers carried that on the German army. It was an officer's sidearm. Yeah. How did you come across that P-38? Well, during, during the battles we went into. Some were dead. Some were laying there. There's all kinds of weapons laying around while we were fighting, especially when you were fighting with George Patton's army. You, they were late. You, 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 you meet everything with <laughs> that. Jim Braun, speaking of food, you have an artifact. This is a, could you hold up this artifact? <laughs> this thing is really heavy. Here, let me hold it up so everybody could see. This, did you make this thing? Yeah, grab that, thank you. Yes, I, uh, in Vietnam, I grabbed a 105 shell. So this is a, the big one's a 105 millimeter artillery shell. And cut it down. Polished it and soldered a 50 cal on and sent it to my mother for her birthday. Send it to your mother for her birthday. <laughs> All right. Could you imagine? <laughs> your mother must have said, what the heck? And you should feel how heavy this is. I mean, you could do some damage with this oh, yeah. thing. Yeah, you're, <laughs> he's, he's all heart, exactly. Um, uh, did she ever thank you for it? Oh, yeah, she Okay. Was, yes, you know. My and you wife. inscribed something. What does it say there? Uh, happy birthday, uh, no. Happy birthday, Mom. It's all my love. All your love. Oh, how great. And you sent it from Vietnam. Yes. Just amazing. What a wonderful artifact that is. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. That's so neat. We have George Fries here who was in the Navy during World War II on an LST. And uh, I want to hear the Navy side of the story. I mean, you guys weren't eating K rations and C rations. and No, I was in charge. Uh, my first job there was stores officer. I made sure we had good stuff to eat. You had good stuff to eat. Did oh, you, have yes. a you had a kitchen on the LST? We had to feed ourselves plus about 500 troops every runway made. Okay. So... And they, they loved it. They hated to get off. The, <laughs> army. the troops hated to get off because yeah. they were being fed <laughs> so well. Yeah. Just another reason why to join the Navy, right? Yeah. Speaking of those rations, I remember there was one of them, I think it was a D ration. They had a chocolate bar, a real heavy chocolate bar. And these uh, soldiers that we delivered left them on the ship. But they were like bricks. So I had our cook make cocoa out of them. <laughs> and those things were, they were special chocolate bars that wouldn't melt in the tropical heat, and, but they were super hard, and you had to just shave them to eat them, from what I understand. Mark Graham, I'm getting to you, Bernie. Hold on. Mark, you're a Navy guy? Um, yes, I'm Navy. First of all, I want to thank you guys for putting this on. This is my first time here. My friend John Ramondi invited me. Um, I was served in the Navy for 10 years. I served on destroyers, PT boats, and gunboats. But um, I come from a family of Navy. My grandfather was in World War II. My father, who's deceased, was in Korea. He served on the USS Miller DD-535. And uh, my younger brother was on the Iowa. That's when the, and his battle station was the turret that exploded and killed 48 guys back in the 80s. He was discharged two months before the explosion. Um, so that, that's a story that touched him deeply. But, um, and then my son ended up joining the Coast Guard. So I'm like, what are you doing? The whole family's Navy, and you decided to go Coast Guard. And, uh, and like Frank, uh, Francis reiterated that the Coast Guard, because he said to me one day, he goes, you know what, Dad, out of all the branches of the military, the Coast Guard is the only one that trains their personnel to save lives. So they have the title Guardians of the Sea. 
So uh, anyway, I'm just thankful to be here and, uh, you know, thankful to serve my country. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Hi, Bernie. You waited very patiently. Would you mind standing up? You, you were talking about uh, rations, right? Yeah, C yeah. rations, K rations, meals ready to eat. In North Korea, at the Chosen Reservoir, that didn't work. It was all frozen. But we, sit, we lived and subsisted on Tootsie Rolls. I don't know if anybody remembered that. You remember that. And uh, they were good. But there's some things about Tootsie Rolls. They were the big ones, you know. And uh, Chinese snipers used to hit the, the uh, radiators on Jeeps and that. And they used segments of that Tootsie Roll to plug the holes. And our executive officer, he carried his weapon and everything, but he also had a golf club. He was carrying a golf club with him. And every time we stopped to take one of them segments, take a swipe at it. So some Chinaman somewhere got a piece of Tootsie Roll to eat. So, and, uh, so there's always something odd I mean, going Tootsie on. Roll's good, but you don't want to eat them for days. <laughs> oh, but that's had, what you... That's... We, had, we kept them. We, uh, in fact... That's yeah. all you ate. And uh, the Tootsie Roll manufacturer, the owners of it, or whatever, they, they are now honorary members of the Chosen Few organization. And the last September, I was in one of the organization uh, 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 reunions, and they gave us a big thing in Tootsie Rolls about that big. And they're about the same size as a 60 millimeter mortar. And I think that's how we got them, because I think that was a code name for mortar ammunition. And, and t Tokyo just, just, just uh, didn't know that, and they sent us a whole bunch of Tootsie Rolls. Huh? That's you gave the ate. code name for mortars, and they <laughs> sent you they actual sent Tootsie, Tootsie Rolls. Rolls. Yeah, they cleaned out the whole warehouse. And, and here. Oh, by the way, you're talking about birthdays. I just turned 90 a couple of days ago. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bernie. <laughs> so that's it. Faye Cohen is my old neighbor growing up. Wasn't I a, a great kid? Yes, you were. <laughs> But Faye, you had a question for the room. Yes, I do, about the rations, because my dad was in World War II, and he used to, I used to like to buy uh, Stouffer's frozen cream chip beef and put it over toast points. And he used to look at me and say, how can you stand that? Because nobody here mentioned shit on a shingle. <laughs> so, I mean, you did get that, right? Okay. You, got, you did get that. Do, was it served in like a mess hall or? Met, so it seems like all generations of. You guys remember it? Let me. What? George, George, could you, you were Navy? What? Exactly. When you went to the Navy, one of the things you thought, well, I'll eat. I don't have to be in foxholes. I won't have MRAs. I won't have C rashes. I won't have K rashes. You go out to sea and they can't supply you any place because typhoons and all that. And I think they wanted to set a record to see how long you could be out there without looking at land. So eventually, you had SOS. Shit on the shingle. <laughs> and what it consisted of was ground meat. And of course, you had a tray and a lot of liquid in there. And it would float off of there if you didn't watch it. <laughs> that was it. Thank you, George, very much. So your, your brother, I mean, your brother here joined the Army. He was Army Korea. You were Navy World War II. Right, exactly. He didn't give you, he didn't give you the advice to join the Navy instead, Bob? No, he didn't, and I'm glad he didn't. Because you were happy in the Army? I wasn't really happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy to come home. <laughs> you, got, you made it back. How about you, Patrick? Do you remember SOS? Oh, yes. <laughs> you mean on a shingle? Yes. Yes. I remember it. Yes. Yeah, you had it too. Was the food good in the Navy? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Uh, I served on four different ships. Could you stand up, Patrick? Yeah. I served on four different ships. Uh, I was on one ship with Suicide. In, Oct in uh, October, I was on the St. George in uh, November, and I was on the Curtis 
in December. And uh, I got transferred back and forth. I had a goofy, I was an aviation painter at the end. Before I went to the Navy, I worked at Travaux for 10 months. I was uh, 17 years old. And uh, because I had worked loading box uh, army gas cans on the trains on the, where you loaded these things eight high, eight wide, on the front, on one side, then you went to the other side, did the same thing, and these cans were hot when they come down the, uh, they were, uh, had this uh, non-specular paint on them and they took them through a burning process to dry them. And they come down, we had white gloves where we taped our fingers to keep them from burning. And this was a job, and uh, when this, uh, we got done with that, I went out to get my last paycheck, and the man said to me, he's going down to Duvall, they're hiring. So I went with him. He didn't get a job, and I did. And at the time, I was 17 years old. And uh, they told me I wasn't born in 1926, I was born in 1925. And that's, I worked at row for 10 months before I went to the Navy. Before you went to the Navy. Thank you very much, Patrick. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.